Hello. Close that. <sighs> so, today is a new day, new day, new model, and we're going to be painting the most beefcakey, broken dude in all of 40k right now. Chapter Iron Father, rather, Phyros, Pharos. This guy is just ridiculous. Completely, completely another, completely and utterly ridiculous. that's okay and so we have the model anytime I'm starting a model just a little texture on the base we're gonna do a snow base for him um, anytime I start painting a fix sorry always making adjustments always making adjustments much better so whenever before I even start painting I kind of make a plan for the model and for Phyros it's pretty straightforward because 90% of this model is either going to be his black armor or it's going to be metallic um, the only thing that's different is his bolter up here um, the bolter is going to be white so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the bolter first and then I'm going to go back I'm going to mask off the bolter and then I'll do his armor and everything um, that way I can airbrush the bolter and just be done with it um, go back in and maybe do you know pick out the detail do a little edge highlight but um, I think painting the bolter first is the right way to go and then we can just take the tape off and and do them when we comes time to do the metallics but we'll mask it for doing his armor which i'll be doing in this same scheme this was a iron hand that i finished uh, for a step-by-step -step tutorial on the patreon and it's got as you can see a metallic like a metallic black sheen to the armor white bolter casing you know, green eyes, pretty standard fare as far as iron hands go. Um, obviously, Phyros has a lot. Pharos, Phyros. Obviously, this guy has a lot more going on than your average iron bro. But he's got some sculpted detail on the shoulders, which is cool. So we probably won't even do transfers on this guy. Um, we're going to do the whole model, basically, in the armor and then just go in and pick out the details. This guy should go pretty quick. Um, I'm not anticipating this guy to take forever. Uh, I do want to spend some time on him because he is he is a main character. He is a named special character for the faction. So I do want to spend some time on him. I want, him. I want him to look really good. But one of the things that is nice about Iron Hands is the armor is pretty straightforward. So it lets you spend some more time on those little details uh, that really make a difference the lenses and you know the axe the axe handle and stuff like that so first things first so he's going to end up looking a lot like this dude and Phyros is the first uh, of a iron hands commission that i took on um, it's going to be a slow slow roll commission um, over months and months adding models here and there so uh, I'm excited about it I think it's going to be really cool it's an all Primaris army so I'll be doing a lot of iron hands uh, on stream so that'll be fun I uh, finished up the Zangors today that I was working on on Tuesday um, so a couple pieces left for that Thousand Suns commission the Forge Fiend and the Leviathan uh, Leviathan I'm painting for uh, another tutorial 
for the Patreon. But I'll work on the I'll work on the forge fiend in the meantime. So for the white on his bolter, uh, we're gonna start with uh, game color somber gray, and this is gonna be our base coat. It's a really nice blue gray. We're gonna then do game color wolf gray. These are both by Vallejo, um, and then just Vallejo model color white. We'll do a little. So after we do the wolf gray. We're going to do a little controlled wash with this secret weapon blue black, which is like a, it says it's a wash, but it's really a glaze. Um, we're going to mix this with a little Lamy and medium and do a controlled wash to get that, that really strong kind of bluish white look, which is going to offset the warmth of the armor. So for the armor, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a base coat, or excuse me, the base coat is just going to be this primer, black primer. Then we're going to do the first round of highlights with game color Tinny Tin. The second round of highlights with this metal color, dark aluminum. And then, oh, I'm the paint so far away. Then we're going to do a very thin glaze of this ink tense black from Scale Color. It's just a really heavily pigmented black ink. And glaze that glaze down those metallics, but it's transparent, and that's how, and that's how we get that sheen, like you can see on his shin. But when you, but when you look at the model like that, it looks black. It definitely looks like a metallic, but it looks black. There's more going on than just silver and black. So I think it's more interesting. Um, and it's easy to do. It's, it's fun to do. It's a nice technique. Um, but it, it is, it is an efficient technique. So first things first, get our trusty zombie airbrush out. This thing's basically a kit bashed airbrush at this point. It's a Patriot 105, but it has like this bottom parts from a Sotar. And then the front and back part are from the 105 Extreme and the triggers from the 105 Extreme. But I messed up an interior part to my 105 Extreme and broke it. So that was my fault during cleaning. But have no fear. This just arrived today. Brand new Patriot Extreme which I'm very, very happy is here. We're still going to use the Patriot uh, Zombie Brush for Phyros while I get this uh, kind of cleaned up and up and running. But this is, it's still a good brush. One thing that I like about Badger is the interchangeability of the parts. Um, so if something goes wrong, did I put the previous one through Extreme Use? This thing? Oh yeah, no, this one's like, no, the, the previous one, I made a mistake while cleaning it, um, in the, I made a mistake while cleaning it. No, these are really durable brushes, super durable. Uh, they're like the Toyota Corolla of airbrushes. Uh, this Badger I've had for a while, um, and I'm, I'm pretty rough on my brushes. Um, and I paint a ton, obviously. So in under here, in there internally is a piece of plastic that it's like a plastic sheath that's like back here, just in front of the trigger in the body where the needle passes through. There's like a plastic sheath in here. And while I was cleaning it, I thought I had a pretty bad clog in there. So I was like really cleaning down in this area and I broke that sheath. So what would happen is I would put paint in and if I tilted the brush like even, all the paint would backflow into the trigger area and like bubble out of the tree, it was awful. So um, so that sheath is what kept the paint and everything from backflowing into the trigger area. Um, 
Yeah, it's beyond annoying. It just made it unusable because paint just got everywhere. So and it fouled the trigger mechanism, and it was just it was just unusable. I totally broke it myself. So um, that's on me. That's not on Badger at all. Um, I've been using Badger airbrushes for I think six or seven years. Um, they're they're the only brand I use. I know a lot of people love Iwata or Harder and Steamback or whatever, but um, these I like because the replacement needle and nozzle sets are only like 15 bucks. Um, they're very, very durable. And the Patriot is like $79 on Amazon. This one's like 110, um, which, you know, I wasn't too happy about spending, but, but it was my fault. It's a great brush. This is a really good detail brush. I like that I can adjust the pressure under the cup, this dial here. If you release it out, whoops. If you release it out, you get more pressure. If you screw it in, you get less pressure. So as I'm painting, depending on the viscosity of the paint, I can go and I can adjust the pressure without having to adjust the compressor. So I just, the compressor, I just set it and forget it. I can adjust the pressure here and then just spray. I like the top, I like the high trigger. Um, and it's just a great brush. It's just a really, it's just a really good brush. It's, it's easy to clean. Um, well, that's new. This little cone thing on the front is new. New design, maybe. Well, that'll help me not, uh, not whack the needle against things, I suppose. But, uh, but no, these are really good brushes. I really like these. So I'm a badger guy. Um, and like I said, they're cheap. So like when I, when I busted it, um, you know, what well, I wasn't happy about it, but what I did is I took the, yeah, I like the Sotar a lot. The cup is too small for me on the Sotar and the noddle, the needle and nozzle are too kind of finicky for me. Um, this is the front part from my Badger Patriot. Um, and this just screws off and the nozzles like. A pretty good size so yeah that's why I have that's why I, I don't have any of those guards or anything on it now what I'll do is when I'm done using the airbrush I'll just loosen it and just pull the needle back and tighten it because I'll absolutely whack this thing on the desk or the compressor or something and just you know ace 16 bucks just in one go so I just loosen it here. I pull the needle back in and then tighten it. And then I can, I can leave it lying on the desk or whatever. Um, I like having the needle exposed so that, like you said, I can just, I can just wipe that right off with a paper towel and just be done with it. So, um, I had the renegade. Don't get a renegade. I don't like that brush. It's just too, the needle and nozzle, Combo is just too finicky. <coughs> Excuse me. Too finicky. That nozzle is like two millimeters wide. It's absurd. Uh, but I really like I really like my badger brushes. So I keep going back to them. I keep looking at other um, keep looking at other brands. Uh, a friend of mine, Mark, does Iwata. Um, he really likes them. He gets really good results. So. But I think Iwata and yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the Sotar, the Sotar is good, um, but the for me the Patriot Extreme replaced the Sotar, and the again the needle kits. I think it's a more durable brush. It's a heftier brush. It has a bigger cup. And then the needle kits for the Patriot Extreme are, you know, 16 bucks or whatever. So um, for me, the Patriot Extreme got just as good a detail as the Sotar, but is cheaper and more durable and just, uh, I mean, I'm a big guy. So, you know, the Sotar is like this little kind of, it feels like this little finesse kind of airbrush and I'm not really, I'm not really a finesse kind of guy. Plus, I mean, I get, I get pretty good <laughs> I get good results, I think, using the tools that I'm using now. So, you know, I'm not in a position, like, if I were to upgrade, I would probably go, like, harder in Steamback or something, go up to, like, 
you know, a really nice, like $300 brush or whatever. Um, but it, financially it just doesn't make sense for me. So, um, so I'm going to keep on, keep on keeping on with, with the tools that I'm using and, and keep getting, you know, what I think are pretty good results. So, um, so first things first, we're just going to give this a quick, quick base coat of that somber gray game color. And I love this. I love this color. It's such a soft, it's such a soft blue gray. And it has just excellent coverage. It covers so well. Um, you can, you can brush paint this right over black. And I'm going to use my finger behind the gun to kind of, to kind of mask it. And that'll cut down on the amount of overspray onto the black parts of the model. And it'll just, like, we'll still have to go back probably and do a little bit of kind of re-priming after we do the bolter. But, um, but I, I don't want to have to go back and do a ton. So if I can just do some, like, use my finger, then... And now we get just a little bit of the whoop, little water, a little bit of the wolf gray. And this is really good coverage too. I mean, that's why I use them. That's why I use them to base coat white. That's why they're, they're in the recipe. Uh, this recipe is a, like, think Angel Herald is maybe pretty sure from model master class volume one, um, which is a great resource. I love, I love his books. He has a YouTube channel now. That's really good, really good. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Um, he paints in a really distinct kind of visual style and uses light really, really well in like a really high contrast style but everything's just so smooth and like, he's just really, really good. Uh, he's the, he used to be the head painter for Corvus Belly who makes infinity. Um, and those things are freaking tiny. So he is, so it's not, he doesn't really paint GW hardly ever. Um, but so this is that wolf gray. Oops. A little water, a little water. Uh, he doesn't paint GW very often, but that's not that's not why I got his book. That's not why I, I follow him. I followed him because of how he uses texture and how he uses light. Um, and he's got some great great tips and and really just fantastic color recipes and how he uses colors. So um, if you haven't checked out angels books or his um youtube channel be sure to check those out because he's really 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 good so he used to be the head painter for corvus belly and then he went out on his own and did his own kind of commission studio and stuff so he still paints his studio still paints for corvus belly they still paint infinity models um but he does all kinds of stuff now mostly box art for for different companies. Um, he just finished doing a bunch of Assassin's Creed stuff, which looked pretty cool. So he's a good guy. Nice guy. So big fan of, big fan of angels. So now that we have, and that looks pretty white. I mean, that's pretty close to white. It's a really, really light base coat, but if you put some white next to it, you can see it's still, it's still light gray. Um, but we want it to be, we want it to be pretty close to white because a white, that way the white doesn't have that much distance to travel before on the spectrum before actually being white. So, so a little bit of that blue black, uh, glaze because it says wash, but it, it absolutely is not a wash. It's for sure a glaze. 
the difference is just a wash tends to wick into the into the recesses and not stain the the high points or the flat points as much. Whereas this absolutely will. If I just brush this over the bolter, which I did in my step by step tutorial, um, then you have to go back and layer, 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 layer. So this time, so having learned from that. Uh, this time, and this is super, super, super thin. Like, you can barely see that. That might be too thin, actually, now that I do that. Um, well, we'll see how it comes out. So you can barely see the blue in there. But when we put it on, yeah, see, that's perfect. That's fine. Huh. It's not showing up on camera, but it's... There we go. You can see it's just a little just a little hint around the rivets. Actually, this is working so well with the Lamian, I might be able to do this. I might be able to do this after I do the white, but let's see. Well, we'll do this and then we'll airbrush it and then we'll see if we get, have to go back. We'll see if we have to go back and do um, we might have to do another little pin wash with this blue black after we do the white. See, that was too much. And get the. So, this is going to be silver, but we want. I do want to establish around that Aquila on the gun. I do want to establish that as so a little bit in there a little bit in there okay so it is staining so we'll go over it with white and then maybe do a more controlled even more controlled pin wash because it is staining the the white it's very very faint i don't want to mess with the color on the camera because you can barely yeah i mean you can see it's it's extremely faint. It's a little bit more. It's a little bit more pronounced in person on the model, but not not much. It is definitely you can see there that I'm putting it on. I'm putting it on pretty heavy, and then I'll wipe it off on the top. But you can see that we are getting that definition. Um, we are getting that definition around those elements, which is what we want. Otherwise, it's just going to be white, and it's just going to be a little boring. Um, so this adds a little bit of color, a little bit of definition, um, which if we just relied on gray and white, we wouldn't get. And we're using the, the blue because we want a little bit of contrast with how warm the model is. So we want a cold white. And we're not using something like Nuln Oil because Nuln Oil is boring for white. Uh, Nuln Oil doesn't do anything for white. It just makes it black. It just makes it dark. Um, it doesn't offer any... It doesn't offer anything interesting to white. It just makes it kind of black in the shadows. And shadows don't, don't actually travel towards black. On the spectrum, they go towards violet. Um, in general, shadows are violet; they're not black. But on a model like this, where it's a little more stylized, um, you know, obviously we're not going to use violet. But using a color like blue just gives it an overall, just gives it kind of a feel, gives it a little bit of crunch. So waiting for that to dry, and there's not really much else we can do because as soon as we as soon as we do the white, then we'll mask. <clears throat> excuse me. Then we'll mask that off, and we'll come through and we'll reprime kind of these areas here. This is going to be this little uh, turret ball thing here. We're going to paint that. I'm not going to be able to mask like this that well perfectly to do the armor and because the armor is this kind of metallic glaze action um 
you can't really go fill it in. Like if I were doing this guy Iron Hand or uh, Ultramarines or something, I could get it close on the masking and then just kind of go in with a dark blue and kind of paint it over and blend it and make it work. But because of the way we're painting his armor, can't really do that. Um, one option was to just leave the gun off, which was a perfectly reasonable option to do because it's really just the gun and this ammo feed that's separate. But the other option is just to assemble him and just paint that silver instead of his armor color and it'll work out just fine. So that's what we, that's what I chose to do. Try and dry out the last of that wash. And I want to do this a little thin so it doesn't just obliterate all that wash that we did. But also fully anticipating that I'll have to go back with a little bit finer brush and do a very careful kind of pin wash with that blue black after, um, after doing the white. But I won't have to do it everywhere. If I'm careful about how I'm shooting this white, uh, I won't have to do the blue everywhere. It should stay in the recesses. So if I have to go back and do like the rivets and stuff, that's not a big deal. Because then I'll go back with the brush. And whoa. And that's why we always, always point away from the model. I didn't, like I said, I pulled the needle back when I store the brush just in my lap or whatever when I'm painting. Um, and sometimes I forget to put the needle back after mixing paint. So I just sprayed uh, an apocalyptic amount of white paint into my, uh, into my mason jar, my paint, my little, what's the word I'm looking for? I use it as like my spray, my overspray, my cleaning bottle. Um, so if I had been anywhere near the model, it would have been very tragic. So with the white, we want to focus on the front of the gun. And you can see well, that blue is not really showing up hardly at all. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. The blue is still there. Um, it's very faint. But it is still there in in places on the front of the gun. And then we're going to go at this pretty steep angle here to try and preserve it between those, those elements on the top of the gun. But now that's white. Now that's white, white. But underneath, you can see we're getting some nice... We're getting a nice fade. It's still that kind of, it's still a little darker back here, a little wider up there. We'll do a crisp edge highlight with pure white and pick out the rivets. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to do that after. Just in case the tape, just in case the tape messes anything up, I don't want to. Because the tape's going to hit those high points, the rivets and everything. Um, I don't want to have to do it twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that blue black and I'm going to go back very gently and do those rivets. leaving pretty much everything else alone because I there's enough enough of that blue in the in the recesses from the previous wash I would adjust the camera so you could see it a little better but the camera's where it needs to be for the for the armor which is going to be the majority of this paint session is going to be spent on that armor. So apologies that this is, and white's just hard, white's just hard to, hard to photograph, it's hard to film. 
Um, not making excuses, but it's a little bit there. And we can always we can always touch this up later. But while we have this blue black Lamian mix, I want to I want to make sure I get everything done that I want to get done on this before moving on. Okay. That looks pretty good. It's definitely white. That's what we wanted. Should have done that on the bolter. <laughs> but the bolter is also a lot harder to mask. Like a bolter, a bolt carbine on an intercessor is a lot harder to mask than that gun that's you know hanging out that far away from the body on Pyros. So that blue black's gonna dry very quickly. So that's good. And then what we're gonna do real quick is we're just we're gonna hit it with a little bit of matte varnish. I use Vallejo matte. So, and just as kind of a place saver and just to give a little, um, a little protection for when we do tape it off, let's do a quick little matte varnish, nothing fancy. And that way it's just a little bit of protection. Um, if I were really worried about it or if it's something that I know is going to be handled a lot, I'd do a gloss varnish just because gloss is a lot more durable than matte. Um, but it's not, I'm just, I'm just masking that off for the duration of like painting the armor and then I'll pull it. There it is. And I use Tamiya tape to mask because it's, it's the best. Uh, it is a little spendy, but I think it's worth the money. There's very low tackiness to the tape. Um, and what we want to do is actually put a glove on the glove. And I'm putting a glove on because I still had a little bit of paint on my fingers, on my left hand. The, the tape will pull that paint off and put it on the model. So you either want to wash your hands or put on a glove. And what I'm doing now, I'm taking a lot of that tackiness off the tape so it's way less sticky now than it was when I just pulled it off the roll. And I'm going to go ahead and just cover the side of this as well as I can. That little ball joint is maybe going to cause me some trouble. So I just take like the back of a brush or something and kind of get that stuck on there. And I can actually wrap this around. Have some excess there. Make sure that we're getting under under the gun. And that's pretty good. This came off again. I may have I may have been a little too vigorous taking the tackiness off, but if you just press it down, it'll adhere. Um, so that looks pretty good. That looks pretty protected, except for the bottom down there. Come on. There we go. And then with this one, come on. There we go. Yeah, Saran Wrap works. Um, I would have, so I would have used Saran Wrap if I had painted Pyros first. 
I would have saran wrapped Phyros and just left the gun outside of the saran wrap. Um, and then painted the gun. But because I painted the gun first, the saran wrap is just so much bulkier than tape that the tape will allow me to paint without the without the masking element, either the tape or the saran wrap getting in the way of, of what I'm painting. Um, saran wrap tends to bulk out a little bit, so, but it is an option. Is that part of the gun or is that, no, it's not, okay. Oh, it's not. So now we're gonna go back with just a little bit of black primer and touch up 